time. I want this boom, 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 right? So, and this, this, that's good because this actually goes back to a, like a couple of Taylor Talks back when I was talking about that book that I was reading that, that's titled It Wasn't Supposed to Be This Way by Liza. And she was basically talking about that, how we plan everything out the way we think it should go. And when it doesn't go that way, we get upset and we get irritated. If God literally sent us a letter saying, okay, it's February what, 2nd today? February 2nd. On February 15th, after Valentine's Day, I'm a senior man. Then towards the end of February, y'all going to go ahead and get married. Like, we like, okay, okay, okay. All God does sometimes is sends us dreams, signs from other people, you know, from, from and it's, it doesn't come with the instructions or it doesn't come with the time on it. So we get impatient and we don't trust it now. Because it's like, okay, I know God said, just like, for example, I had a dream long ago that I was going to carry a child. But what was I doing when we, when we couldn't conceive? Basically, when it's kind of taken in your own will, your own power. I would cry soul. too, get upset. I would have times with you where I was like, I just don't think I can have kids, Ken. I just don't, right? But God clearly showed me when my grandmother, who's gone home to be with the Lord, she was folding clothes, and she said, she's pregnant. I said, Grandma, I know I'm not. Right? So I'm like, hold on, God. Pregnant with what? Is this pregnant with a new album? Pregnant with a new, you know, what is this going on? But because he didn't give me instructions and say what day it was going to be, I was very impatient. And that's, I think that a lot of us rock like that. And I think that God wants us to. It's almost like that's where the faith and the trust comes in. You know what I mean? But it's just hard. And I've, I dealt with that in the past. I still deal with it now because we went through that with, with little mama until I came to you and said, you know what, Ken? God showed it to me. And I, I'm, I'm not doing right by challenging him and steady getting depressed and sad. If he showed it to me, if he said it so, then it's so. I just don't know when that's going to be. And obviously I need to be preparing and get myself, get myself right. So what did I say? I'm going to start getting in the gym. I'm going to da-da-da-da-da. Stop following the app that we had like I just shut everything down and we didn't even like we wasn't thinking we were pregnant and boom it happened so I think that we all kind of have a little bit of that in us so like the question that comes to mind when I think about <clears throat> patience and waiting on God is do we begin to doubt God his ability his willingness or do we subconsciously focus on our, our own limitations you know, like, is it, is it more about God and his timing, or is it about our impatience mixed with the fear that we're not chosen? Both. The, the fear of I'm not qualified. Both. I'm still bound by my past and what other people say I am. All of that begins to creep in when you start feeling like God ain't going to do it. You start doubting God, then you start doubting yourself. Like, I feel like all of that pl plays a part. And this is why it's so important to meditate on that word day and night. And I know it sounds redundant to some people. It may sound boring. It, it may even seem like I've read Job a thousand times. I've read David a thousand times. But the reason why he said, you know, you shall be blessed if you meditate on that word day and night is because meditating on that word for me personally has allowed me to get outside of myself so that I can stop looking at my background. I can stop looking at my mistakes. I can stop looking at my traumas. I can stay focused on the fact that he's able. He's still the same God in Genesis that he is today. I know that regardless of my limited resources or experience, he can grant me the wisdom of Solomon. So what happens is there's a disconnect. We pray to God, we seek God, we say we love God, we hoot, we shout, but then what we do is we disconnect yeah. and we begin to look in the mirror, we look in our account, we go, we go look at our car that's barely starting, we look at our kids that are operating in rebellion, but what that word does is it's a constant reminder and a, and a form of spiritual accountability yeah. that when you're looking at your situation, trying to figure out there's no way he can turn this 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 dirty water in the wine you're reminded in the scriptures you're reminded when he has done some incredible miraculous and and historical things that yes i know he can do it in me we have to take our eyes off ourselves which is tricky because you got to ask god for the thing you want him to do in your life and almost stop looking at it 
You have to stay focused on him. Okay. And then you'll see the work being done. You feel we in tune because I was just going to say, it's harder now because you read. Okay, you get up in the morning, you do your prayer, your meditation. You pray, you read your word, you're straight. It's not until you pick up that phone. <laughs> Real talk. You pick up your phone, you get to scrolling. Social media or a phone call. Oh, my God. And then you're knocked off your game because it's, it, it, it intentionally comes to do that. So everything that you have prayed about, everything that you have read, it goes out the drain because the rest of your day is full of scrolling. What's the first thing we do when we get bored at home? If if there's nothing on the TV, doing nothing to you reinforce start that promise, doing nothing to reinforce. I'm be that honest. Faith. I Facetime Dorikas every morning. Every morning. Dorikas got a word for Trying you. Trying to have <laughs> a very intimate. Just you know what? Good morning, brother. God is good all the time. You know what he's doing? Now they got that new thing on the iPhone where you can still see somebody and text and scroll at the same time. You know that? I, yeah. Got to tell you that. Yeah. So I notice him scrolling while I'm talking. She think. You are scrolling. You're scrolling. And, and, and that's what happens is like it can cloud. I'm not saying it clouds Dorikas because we all are pretty, you know, strong. And, but some people who are not, who are especially new, newcomers to, to the word, newcomers to this. And I've been in church all my life and I'm a newcomer. You get what I'm saying? When I say I'm a newcomer, I'm a newcomer to reading my word, and I can get better at that, but reading my word. So, so, so to the newcomers and to the people who are kind of a little rocky, as soon as you start reading your word, as soon as you come out of prayer time, you start scrolling, everything is telling you to outrun God. You get what I'm saying? I get it, but like it's, it's like, not but, forgive me. It's like <clears throat> there's certain things that we can do to control. Our, our circle of power and faith to keep ourselves protected, then there's things we can't control. Yeah. Like Sunday, we got up, we had a dope worship session, and then a phone call came that rocked our whole day. Yeah. But what did we do? We said, you know what? That thing came to try to rob us of that word. We got to hold on to that. Yeah. It's a fight. It's no coincidence that every time somebody comes speaking to your life, every time somebody says you're being considered for that promotion, every time you feel like your relationship or marriage is breaking you know, breaking that threshold of resistance and, 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 and it's showing promise, that win is going to come. It's a net Right. But we fall too many times because we take our eyes off his promise. We close our ears to his word and we focus on that win more than anything else. So those are the things that really, and again, there's endless, there's an endless number of things that can distract us but we do just have to get better at waiting on god because it's not fair to him he will do what he said he's gonna do if he did it in your life he can do it in my life if he did it in my life he can do it in your life we have to not penalize him because of our own distractions our own impatience and our own feeling of self-worth or inability 